Okay, today we are going to work on simplifying radicals that are not perfect. And many people know how to do a square root using a factor tree, but um, what I want to show you is a little bit different method for doing that that I think is a little bit faster. If you do like to use a factor tree, you can go ahead and do that. Um, but I want to recommend trying this out because I think if you can figure out how to find the biggest perfect root that goes into the number, it might speed the process up a little bit. Okay, so if you don't have it, um, you might grab the page of notes right before this, but this is that little yellow piece of paper. So here's how I do this. I have a square root of 45. So if I'm trying to break this down, I need the biggest number on my list of perfect squares that'll divide into 45 if it's not already a perfect square. So 45 is not on the list. So I just start going down the list, and you can take the number, divide it by these numbers to find something that works if you're not sure with your factors. Um, but I know that 9 is the biggest number on this list that's going to divide into 45. So what I do real quick, I just rewrite it. It has to be multiplication, something that will divide into that number. I rewrite that real quick as 9 times 5, 9 being the biggest perfect square. And then all you do is take the square root of 9, which is 3, that comes out in front, and everything else stays underneath. So that'd be three roots of five. Now, 250 here is under a cube root, so you're looking at these numbers. And if you want to just test 250, just divide it by these numbers. Don't use one. Start with the second number down, because all the numbers will be divisible by one. Um, but 125 goes into 250. So I'm going to rewrite this real quick. 250 is the same thing as 125 times 2. And then I just go ahead and take cube root of 125. That comes out as a 5. And left under the cube root, I have a 2. If you do want to do a factor tree with a cube root, you have to pull out groups of 3 versus a square root where you pull out groups of 2. Um, if you do a factor tree, you can do that here, um, but you need three pair, three in a group and not a pair, I guess. So three numbers that are the same to pull it out. And if you do a fourth root, you need four numbers the same to pull it out. Again, I think it's a little bit faster to find the biggest number on your list of perfect. In this case, I'm going to do the fourth root um, of whatever goes into this. It's a little faster. So 48 divisible by 16 on this list. So I would rewrite that real quick, 16 times 3. And then the fourth root of 16 would come out as a 2. So this would simplify to be two fourth roots of 3. Okay, then we're going to work with variables. So if the exponent is divisible by the root, then it's going to be a perfect whatever you're working with. If it's not, then you're going to have to manipulate a little bit. All right, so this one is a square root. They're not going to write the index in there. I need my exponent to be divisible by 2 to pull out any perfect squares, and 3 is obviously not divisible by 2. So what I do here, I just rewrite this real quick using exponent properties, and I try to get for any square root the biggest even number that will go into 3. So 2 I could pull out, and I'm just rewriting this. x squared times, this would technically be x to the first, is still x cubed if I put it back together with my product property there for exponent rules, but anything with an even exponent is a perfect square under a square root, so this could come out as an x, and so my answer, I could take an x out, but I still have x left underneath. Another way you could do this, if you want, um, is actually divide the exponent by the root like we've been doing, so how many times does 2 go into 3? Um, and I just do straight up normal long division. So 2 goes into 3 once. This would be 2. My remainder would be 1. So I can take 1x out and 1 will be left underneath. So if you want to do that instead, you could do that. I usually just rewrite the variable real quick. So x to the ninth under a square root, I would do x to the 8th times x. So this is going to come out, divide 8 by 2. This is going to come out as x to the 4th. And then you have an x left underneath. Again, I'll just show you real quick. If you want to do the division, 2 goes into 9, 4 times, 4 times 2 is 8, remainder 1. So 4 x's can come out and 1 has to stay underneath. So if you want to do that, you can. 
uh, cube root, I need my exponent to be divisible by 3 to take anything out. So I would rewrite this as x cubed times x squared. I'm going to pull out an x, and then that x squared is left underneath. And 3 does not go into 2, so there's 2 left under. So sometimes you can have exponents on these. Cube root x to the 16th. Biggest number I can think of of 16 that 3 goes into would be 15. So I'd write x to the 15th times x. Here I'm going to divide my exponent by 3. So this would be x to the 5th. And I got this 1 underneath. So x to the 5th cube root of x. And I just kind of continue this process. So if you're a 4th root, you want your exponent to be divisible by 4. So out of 11, biggest thing I could get would be 8. So I would just rewrite that real quick, x to the 8th times x cubed. Now here, I'm dividing my exponent by 4 since we're working with a fourth root. So that's going to come out as an x squared. So this would be x squared, fourth root, x cubed. The next one, let's see, I would do out of 15, not divisible by 4. So I would do 12 and 3. And here I'm going to take... 4 divided by, or sorry, 12 divided by 4 would come out as x to the 3rd. So this would be x to the 3rd times the 4th root of x to the 3rd. If you're working with the 5th root, you want your exponent divisible by 5. So I would go x to the 10th x squared here. Again, now I'm dividing my exponent by 5. So this would come out as an x squared. This would be x squared times the 5th root of x squared. And then I got one more 24 under a fifth root. Sorry, I haven't been writing the index on some of these. Um, let's see. Mm, 5 goes into 20. So I would do 20 and 4. That'll add back up to 24. x to the 20th is a perfect fifth root. This will come out as x to the 4th. And so I have x to the 4th, fifth root, x to the 4th. And I know on several of these, the what I have left under and what I pulled out match, but that's that doesn't always happen. That's just what's happened in some of these questions we've had as examples. All right, now for the rest of this, we're going to put our variables and numbers within to the same or within the same problem here. So I actually have two examples that are kind of already set up for you. This one's a square root. And this one's a cube root. So we did 45 at the top, so we already saw how to break that down, 9 times 5. Now, x to the 7th, this is a square root, and so I did x to the 6x, and so I'm just going to see what I can pull out. So 9 comes out as a 3 under a square root. x to the 6 is going to come out as x to the 3rd. Now, anything left has to stay underneath, so I didn't take out a 5, that wasn't a perfect square, and I didn't take out an x, so those should stay under. So this would simplify 3x cubed, and then still under my square root, 5x. And some of these look really complicated as your actual answer, but if you can't get any more perfect squares, you can't break that down any further, and that's just going to be your answer. Now, this is a cube root, so make sure you're paying attention to what type of root you're looking at here. So um, on that list of perfect cubes, if you want me to, it's going to be a little bit of glare here. Um, so here's our perfect cubes. Out of 80, the biggest number on that list that will divide in is just going to be 8. So I rewrote that as 8 times 10. Now the cube root of 8 is going to come out as 2. 10 is not divisible by any perfect cube, so it's just going to stay underneath n to the 6 under a cube root is going to come out as n squared, and then 2 over 3. If your exponent is smaller than your root, then you're not going to be able to remove anything else. All right, so we have a 2n squared out in front, and then left under the cube root, we have the 10 and the n squared, and that would be simplest radical form. All right, so I just have, these are broken down into squares, cubes, fourths. So this first example here has just perfect squares. So I just want to look at this list. Biggest number on this list that goes into 72. And you guys might know, let me grab my calculator real quick here. Um, so 72, obviously divisible by 9. 
Okay, but if I divide that and I notice the number I get as my answer is, sorry, I got a glare on this, guys. Um, if that number is divisible by something else on the list, so for example here, 8 is divisible by 4, I did not pick the biggest perfect square that went into that. So if if 9 goes in or if 4 goes in or whatever, you just check a bigger number. So I'm just checking some perfect squares. So 16 doesn't go in. If 9 goes in, maybe check 36 and because 9 goes into 36. So biggest number that will go into 72 is 36. So 36 times 2. Now, a to the third is not a perfect square, so I'm going to break that apart. b to the fourth, that has an even exponent, so I'm just going to leave that alone. We're going to remove any perfect squares, so 36 comes out as a 6, a squared comes out as an a, b to the fourth comes out as b squared, so I've got 6ab squared, and then left underneath we had a 2 and an a. All right, square root again. Um, 108, actually biggest number on that list that goes into 108 is also 36. So this is 36 times 3. x to the fifth, that's not a perfect square, so I'm going to break that apart. So I've got an even exponent. y squared, that's a perfect square because I've got an even exponent, so I'm going to leave that alone. And under square root again, sorry, 36 comes out as 6. x to the fourth is going to come out as x squared y squared is just going to come out as a y, and we have a 3 and an x that are still underneath there. So 6x squared y, and then left underneath, we've got 3x. All right, and now under the cube root, I want to look at that list of perfect cubes there. So 24, list of perfect cubes, divisible by 8. You can take the cube root of a negative number, and what I do, I just attach the negative to whatever the perfect cube is, or perfect whatever I'm working with. Um, you can't take the square root or fourth root of a negative number and get a real answer, but we can with the cube root. So 24 is 8 times 3, and then x to the fourth, that exponent has to be divisible by 3 to be a perfect cube, so I'm going to break that apart. And I just need an exponent divisible by 3 to do that. Now, I'm going to take that out as a negative 2. This will come out as an x. And then you still have a 3 and an x left underneath. 54 on this list of perfect cubes, the biggest number that's going to divide in is going to be 27. So I'm going to rewrite this real quick, 27 times 2. Now, a to the 7th exponent is not divisible by 3, so i got to break that apart. I'd call that a to the 6 times a to the 1st. b to the 11th, also not divisible by 3. I'm going to go 9 and 2 to break that apart. So cube root of 27 comes out as 3. a to the 6 comes out as a squared. b to the 9th, b to the 3rd, and then everything else is not able to break down, so it has to stay underneath. So I've got 3a squared b cubed, and then we've got a cube root. There was a 2, there was an a, and there was a b squared. All right, and then we're going to do fourths here. Okay, so I would look at my list of perfect fourths. It's a fourth column over here. Okay, now... 162, if I'm not sure, I just literally start dividing it by numbers on that list. So I would check 16, and the next one is 81. Beyond that, the numbers are too big, so there's really only two things to check. So 62 is going to be 81 times 2. So I'm going to rewrite that. All right, now I need my exponent divisible by 4, so i got to break apart the x. I'm going to do x to the 4th and x, and 36 is divisible by 4, so I'm going to leave that y alone. Now, 4th root, make sure you be careful this, is 81 is a perfect square, but we're under a 4th root. This is going to come out as a 3. This is going to come out as an x. This is going to come out as y to the ninth. Everybody else has to stay underneath. So our answer, we're going to have 3xy to the ninth. And left under our fourth root, we have a 2 and we have an x. All right, and we got one more. Now, again, fourth root 
if you're looking at these, really the only thing you have to check would be the 16, because 81 is too big, and 16 does go into 64. This is 16 times 4. Again, I need my exponent divisible by 4. So if it's 7, we're going to go 4 and 3 to break that apart. 12, I'm going to go ahead and leave alone because that's divisible by 4. Now the 4th root, 16, again, this is also a perfect square, but under a 4th root, it's 2 to the 4th power. So we're going to pull out a 2. This is going to come out as an x. This is going to come out as a y cubed. And everybody else has to stay underneath. So I've got 2xy cubed. Then you have a 4th root and a 4x to the 3rd. And a, just a quick way to check, if your exponent is smaller than your root, then you're good. If your exponent on your variable is bigger than your root, then you need to break it down a little bit further. And then real quick, just a couple examples kind of adding on multiplication here. So you can always multiply like radicals together, or you can always multiply radicals of the same type. So you can multiply square roots or multiply cube roots together. All you do, you're just going to squish them together and multiply them. So 5 times 10, this would just become 50. And then I'm just going to break that apart. This is a square root. Biggest perfect square that goes into 50 is 25. So I would just rewrite that real quick. 25 times 2. Square root of 25 is 5. So that comes out in front. Perfect square. And the 2 stays under the square root. If you have something like I have in the next question with numbers in front of the radical, you're going to go ahead and multiply those together. So negative 2 times 5 is negative 10. That's going to be out in front. And then under the radical, you multiply together. So 8 times 10 is going to be 80. Now, biggest perfect square <coughs> excuse me, that goes into 80 is 16. So I'm going to rewrite that real quick as 16 times 5. And when I take the perfect square here, the square root of 16 is 4. If something already exists out in front, when you remove that, you want to multiply those together. So negative 10 times 4 is negative 40. 5 stays under the square root. This last one's a cube root here real quick. Um, 16, sorry, negative 16 times 32 is going to give you negative 512. And we can't take the cube root of a negative number, so we're okay there. Um, and actually, I don't know how familiar you guys are with this, but on your list of perfect cubes, 512 is actually there. So this we don't even have to break apart. This is actually a perfect cube. So the cube root of negative 512 is negative 8. Reason for that, if I take negative 8 to the third power, that's 512. So if I'm taking a cube root, that's going to make that negative 8. All right, now, if you multiply together and you have variables in the mix, you're just going to use exponent properties to do this. So I'm going to take, and this one's kind of done for you a little bit, but this is a cube root, 54m squared, and cube root of 5m to the third. You take the 54 and the 5, you multiply them together. That's the 270. And for the variables, when you multiply these, you multiply the numbers and then you add the exponents on the bases that are the same. So these are both m. So m squared times m to the third gives you m to the fifth. That's one of our exponent properties. Now, I went ahead and already broke this apart here for you. So if I'm trying to break it down under a cube root, biggest perfect cube on this lovely list that's going to go into 270 is actually going to be 27. So I broke that apart as 27 and 10. And I actually broke these back apart because the exponent was not divisible by 3. So I wrote m to the third m squared. So here we're going to pull out a 3. We're going to pull out an m. And everybody else has to stay underneath because they're not perfect cubes. So 3m left underneath your cube root. 10m squared. All right, so we'll just practice a couple more. I've got a square root, a cube root, and a fourth root to try out here. Outside the radical, we're going to multiply. So 3 times 2 is 6. Underneath the radical, I'm going to do 7 times 21. So that's 147. You got 3x's here, 3x's here. So I've got 6 of them. And I only have a y in this radical, so nothing to combine that with. And then I'm just going to try and break that down. Now, 147 is divisible by 49 on your list of perfect squares. It's 49 times 3. x to the 6th is already a perfect square because it's got an even exponent. 
and then the y to the ninth, I gotta break that apart to try to remove any perfect square. So I'm gonna do y8 and y. We're gonna pull out, this is the square root seven, x to the third, y to the fourth, and I already had a six out in front here, so I'm gonna multiply that with the seven. So we're gonna get 42, x to the third, y to the fourth, and then left underneath here I had a three, and here I had a y. So just left under my square root, three y. Next one's a cube root. So again, you're just gonna multiply the numbers. Both of these are cube roots. So we're gonna squish them together. So negative 50 times five, negative 250. One X here, six here, so I've got seven total. Nine Y's here, three Y's here, so we've got 12 total. Now I need my exponents on my variables to be divisible by three here, so we'll have to break apart the X. 250 um, is 125 times two, so 125 being a perfect cube, I just leave the negative with that. We're gonna go X to the six times X, leave the Y to the 12th alone, because that's a perfect cube. This is gonna come out as negative five x squared, y to the fourth, and so I have that negative 5x squared, y to the fourth out in front, and then left under the cube root, I had a 2 and I had an x. And then finally, we're going to do a fourth, so 8 times 2 is going to give you 16. We're squishing these together, 1p here, 2 more here, so we have 3 total. 10 Q's here, 14 here, so I have 24 total. Now, 16 is a perfect fourth, so I'm just gonna leave that alone. P to the third is just not something I can break down because I don't, that exponent is smaller than that root, so we're just gonna leave that alone. And I don't know why I just wrote that, I should have paid attention before I started doing that. 24 is the perfect fourth. Now, this comes out as a two. That p cubed, that exponent is smaller than that root, so that's got to stay underneath. And this is going to come out as q to the sixth. 24 divided by 4 is 6. So I don't have a perfect root here. We have 2 q to the sixth, and then left under that fourth root is the p cubed.